everybody, it's Keith of Bob CNC. Welcome to Shop Talk. And as always, I am with my best friend Bob. And I'm with my best friend Keith. And I wasn't sure I was ever going to see you again. Yeah, I, I've been sick a little you bit were, for a couple yeah, of days. You're knocking on heaven's <laughs> door. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Me too. But anyway, uh, I, there was a, uh, what do you call that thing? Facebook. A Facebook. Just had a message on Facebook that said, we need to talk about machine maintenance. Okay. Well, we can do that. And so, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, let's talk about machine maintenance. Okay. Well, what about, what, what, what so, do we got to mean? Well, I mean, what I could see go wrong? That, well, just about everything. But uh, the, the main things that we see, I think, would probably start off with the, uh, the motor brushes. So the router itself, brushes. Okay. Right, those are a maintenance area. They're really easy to change. There's videos out there on it. Uh, they're not that expensive, but I tell you what, you know, we cut a lot of MDF. Yes. And, and those are hard on brushes. MDF is hard on brushes. Yeah. Because you've got such fine dust. Yeah. So anytime you have dust, really fine dust, you're gonna, it's going to be well, tough. Well, not just fine dust. It's just, this stuff is aggressive. Yeah. I mean, if I'm back there working on the machine, I feel like I've shaved really close because it abrades your face. Really? Yeah. Huh. I shouldn't have my face so close, well, probably. I shouldn't go back. Well, yeah, I could, you, yeah, you have a filter. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any. Yes, yeah, all right. Anyway, uh, if you're making really nice wood chips, you're, you'll find out that, you know, your brushes will last longer. So, you know, the key is to uh, to take care of the motor brushes. Right. One thing that you can do if, if you are cutting stuff that's fine and, and dusty is get a really good dust collection system. Uh, or at least every time you use it, take the compressor and clean off that router and get that, that stuff away from those brushes. So right. brushes is a big deal. We see that a lot uh, uh, for most folks that are, are cutting your hardwoods you know, or your softwoods. Not going to be an issue, but uh, for those that are cutting uh, composites or MDF, it's, yep. it's going to be an issue. And it, yeah, and when you say it's an issue, it's not like in every month or every, even not even an annual issue. It depends on how hard you're using your machine or how often you're using your machine. Right. And so, I mean, well, the symptom's gonna be that your router just isn't operating right. It's something you don't have to worry about. It makes a gurgly sound. If it yeah. makes a gurgly sound, it's time to... Uh, I need new brushes. <laughs> new brushes. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, so what's the next thing? Well, another thing, I got some. I have to go home and put new belts on my machine. Huh. I, uh, I'm embarrassed because I had my belts too tight. And I happened to notice I just got done making well, the back I can't put that hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Man. No, with this belt what happened is I adjusted it I, I just adjusted it too tight yep. and I just ran a bunch of projects and I noticed I had black flex on the uh, side of the machine, you know, on the outside. And I thought, ooh, and then I felt the belt and it was the guy that doesn't clean very often. Yeah, and, well, and I used to have a maintenance company that's a gas. <laughs> But <laughs> that, that is pretty sad. <laughs> well, that's why I'm working for you now. Yes. I lost that company. <laughs> so, the, so the belt cogs on the, on the belt yeah. pulleys, they're actually designed to, to hold those. So you don't need it really tight. So right. you don't get a lot of extra anything by having tight other than extra wear. Yes. So the whole concept is to tighten those belts up just enough to where they're not bouncing around. Correct. And unlike a... Uh, Unlike the brushes in a router, which mm -hmm. can last a long time, when you over tighten your belts, uh, you can burn through them in about a month. Yeah. Which I did. Yeah. So today I'm going to put the belts on my machine. one of our favorite testers. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so you got bearings. Yeah, the bearings, you're going to want to keep those snug up against the rails. Um, the biggest thing, if, if you're running it within its capabilities, this isn't going to happen. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, if you're going to try to take really deep passes really fast, uh, things are going to loosen, loosen up. Yeah. Right? Well, you ought to be able to tell that that's not working too good, though. Yeah. Well, you can. But, you know, if, you, if you're brand new to this, oh, that's you get true. really yeah. a, a good feel for that. So we do have the speeds and feeds. Like I should later. talk about somebody doing something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I, would, yeah, I wouldn't go there. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm a hypocrite. Yeah. Hypocrite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've all done it, you yeah. know, I mean, you know, it just, it just happens trying to be aggressive. I mean, we actually test our machines and we try to give you the parameters that, uh, right. that you can, but uh, a, a good rule of thumb for most is you never go 
uh, deeper than one times the bit diameter. And even that could be a bit aggressive for some of these hobby machines. It, it, so You had to turn it into multiplication? I am sorry. Why could you just say don't go deeper than the bit's diameter? No, multiply it times one. What? What did he say? And then I had to think about it. Yeah, well, I am sorry I made you think about oh, it. It is early. Yeah, so, I need a break. So, the, yeah, so the bear, either way, you're going to want to make sure that, uh, you know, when you before you start a, a nice project, to make sure that those are all um, snug up against the right. rails. Again, they don't need to be really over tight. You're wanting to over tight. Uh, the way that I check mine at home, is I'll have the machine off so that it rolls nice, and I'll actually grab the bearing and roll it. If, if I can move the bearing and it doesn't roll back and forth that axis, then I know that it's not snug enough. Right. Right, so that's how I check it. Um, one last thing. Yeah. I just think, in general, uh, if you're gonna want your machine to give you uh, uh, years of service, uh, trouble-free, then you definitely want to make sure that it, everything stays clean, right? right? Including the rails, uh, yes. The, the acne uh, or the ball screw. screw yes. yeah, so, uh, yeah, a clean machine. Uh, is a happy machine. Is a happy machine. Well, that's, I think that's true, honestly, with any uh, tool right. in your shop. Right. Other than maybe the chainsaw. I don't know. No, no, no. That needs to be clean and to sharp, too. Clean it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I should probably have to correct it. That's fair. That's fair, right? right? Yes, yeah. Okay. okay. All right, so I think really that's it. Uh, you really should, if you have the belt snug up, take care of those motor brushes and keep it clean. Yep. I think uh, you'll find that uh, you'll get uh, some good results out of it. Guys, if you got any CNC questions, any issues with any of our machines, or you have ideas you want to share, you can get a hold of us at the help desk at bobcnc.com. So until next time, yeah, thanks for we'll all. see ya.